Hi guys, and welcome to FD13 Computerized Fashion Design. Uh, this is the summer uh, 2021 course um, that will be beginning uh, June 21st and going to about August 2nd. Um, this is an introductory video, so I just want to talk a little bit about um, the course and what to expect and policies and procedures and so on. Now everything that I go over is detailed in the syllabus, which I'm showing you right here and can be found uh, in the course information section on Blackboard. And it's very important that you um, utilize Blackboard um, uh, as this is an online course and all of the course information uh, assignments, video lessons will be posted there. And I'm assuming that you're watching this on Blackboard right now. Okay, so um, this is computerized fashion design. It's a fairly introductory course. Um, if you haven't taken all these courses, kind of don't worry about it. Um, it's not a big deal. Uh, required text is Adobe Photoshop for fashion design by Susan Lazier. Um, we're not going to be doing any assignments out of the book, nor is it going to be required specifically for any of the assignments, but it's a really, really great reference to have. So um, you can go ahead. It's not that expensive, so which is really great. Most textbooks and stuff uh, and required text can be quite pricey, uh, but this is not. Um, and again, really great reference to have, um, but uh, if you're late or worried about having it in time for this class, don't worry about it. Um, it's not going to be required for any of the assignments. Uh, just quick description of this course. This is an, uh, well, not too advanced. Sorry, it's a little basic. I'll take that out. Uh, <laughs> it's a fashion design course. It's really not an advanced course. It's, it's actually kind of an introductory course um, into um, uh, uh, digital uses and applications and softwares of the fashion industry. Um, it's carried on into the advanced course, which is FD25 Advanced CAD. Um, it's a computer lab course that covers various computer programs used by designers, specifically fashion designers, uh, to create their designs. Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator are the central programs to be covered. So we're mainly going to be doing work in Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, which are um, the primary uh, softwares used uh, in the fashion industry. Um, before you get into like pattern making software, which is all FT25 Advanced CAD. It will, however, provide an introduction to Optitex PDS, which again is more fully covered in the sort of sub subsequent class to this FT25. Although Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator have a myriad of uses, this course will focus on how they are utilized within the fashion industry. Assignments and lessons will revolve around the most common uses for these programs in fashion. So basically what this is saying is we're not going to do a fully comprehensive lesson on how to use uh, Photoshop or Illustrator. And uh, instead what we're going to do is we're going to sort of extract and focus on uh, the functions of these programs and uh, how they're most utilized in the fashion industry. Um, so we're going to look at it through that lens um, and we're, we try to present a course that um, is very comprehensive uh, within uh, the fashion industry field. So obviously Photoshop and Illustrator um, are utilized in many different ways in many different fields. We are not going to cover all of that. We're going to simply focus on their applications and uses within the fashion industry. Student grades will be determined by the quality of completed assignments created using the computer uh, specified software. This course is required for all fashion design majors. Uh, the industry demands computer literacy more and more so. I say this every semester, but um, even now after <laughs> the whole world has become digitized uh, due to the pandemic, um, it is plunged just even further down this road of uh, demanding uh, computer literacy and uh, uh, basically abandoning older, more traditional methods uh, utilized in the fashion industry for uh, digitized versions of those older uh, techniques. And of course, the things that we learn here are no exception. Um, the, man, the demand for computer fluency and specifically fluency in Adobe software within the fashion industry is very high with most entry-level jobs requiring this knowledge. 
Okay, so this is really important. A lot of you have already taken some sort of um, uh, Photoshop or uh, Illustrator or Adobe software classes. They're offered a lot of times in high schools now just because they are very ubiquitous. And again, not only in the fashion industry, so just knowledge of Photoshop and Adobe is really just required for anybody in any part, any form of design from interior design to graphic design to product design. Um, but again, uh, very, very highly sought after um, and, and almost to this point where it's, it's really required to be eligible for um, a position in any sort of design industry. Um, that's sort of the base level of the software knowledge that you need to have. Outcomes for this class. One, to learn basic image editing techniques. Two, to learn how to use Photoshop to create mood boards. Three, to learn how to create professional and accurate technical sketches in Illustrator. Um, these technical sketches are called flat sketches in the fashion industry. Of course, we'll talk more about that when we get to the lessons on them. Uh, learn how to develop and present a color palette. Learn how to develop stripe and plaid swatches for fabric development. Learn how to develop print repeat swatch, uh, up, uh, sorry, learn how to develop a print repeat swatch for fabric development. Learn how to implement a fabric swatch design as a fill in a flat sketch. To become generally proficient in the tools and processes of Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. To learn the general uh, tools and processes of Optitex PD. So um, basically one through eight all apply to Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop with uh, the nine being the exception um, onto OptiDex, which should sort of give you a good idea of you know, how much each of the programs are going to be covered in the course. Course structure. This course is an online course and will be taught asynchronously. This means that there will be no scheduled times at which students must be in attendance. So we're not gonna have any, so don't worry, we're not gonna have any classes. I'm not gonna require you to be um, in Blackboard Collaborate or anything like that. This is a completely flexible course. However, there still are uh, due dates for the assignments, um, which we'll get into next. Um, all information, course contents, assignments, and announcements for this course can be found on Blackboard. So please use Blackboard frequently and check your school email frequently to ensure you stay up to date with the information and assignments for this course. Um, just because this course is taught asynchronously does not give you the green light to check out all semester and then try to vigorously get everything done in the last week. That is, uh, well, not only will you be subject to potentially a withdrawal, uh, which we'll get into um, later on with attendance policy, um, but it's, it's just a recipe for, for disaster. So uh, again, please stay up to date as best you can. So asynchronous, uh, video lessons will be released each week and it will be up to the student to watch each video lesson on their own time. Assignments will be given based on the video lessons and will involve a variety of fashion related tasks using the course software. Links to videos will be posted onto Blackboard, uh, but the video uh, themselves will be posted to YouTube on the channel KCC FD13. So what does this mean? So um, what will happen is each week you will have uh, a course week. So when you go to your course content section on Blackboard for FD13, um, each week will have its own folder, week one, week two, week three, so on and so forth. Within each week, uh, you will find the assignments for that week. You will also find the video lessons for that week. However, the lessons themselves the videos are not going to be posted to Blackboard, just the link to them will. Um, it's not that confusing. Click the link. You'll be redirected to YouTube um, on my YouTube channel, KCC FD13. Um, you can go directly to that channel and hey, you can even subscribe to the channel. If you do, uh, YouTube will alert you of every time uh, I post new videos. Uh, for the course. Typically lessons and all course information for the week will be uh, posted by Sunday before that week. So um, um, everything for that week 
uh, will be ready and waiting for you in the uh, week folder uh, prior to the beginning of that week, the Monday of that starting week. In addition to the video lessons, handouts in the form of PDFs or JPEGs or other file formats will be posted to the content section in Blackboard. Um, this will be in its own folder labeled Handouts, and the handouts will also include, include descriptions of assignments and general information. Um, the assignment handouts will also be found in the uh, week folder that the assignment is relevant to. Grading. Grades will be based solely on student assignments. There are no tests for this course, there are no quizzes, um, they're simply assignments that you must complete. Each assignment will be graded based on the quality, accuracy, and completeness of each pat of uh, each project. Sorry, I'll have to correct that too. <laughs> each assignment will have its uh, own handout that will describe the requirements, objective, due date, and other details relevant to that project. These handouts can be found on Blackboard in the course content section. The weekly folders will contain the assignment handouts relevant to that week's lessons. A more detailed summary of when the assignments will be given and when they are due can be found in the week-to-week -week schedule for this class. It's posted in the course information section on Blackboard. So you'll be able to find this syllabus um, and the week-to-week -week schedule in the course information section. I have it up here if you just want to scroll through it. Let's scroll through it. So this is just our general week-to-week -week schedule. So if you want to make sure that you have everything completed, want to know what's in store, um, so on and so forth, this is a really great resource to have. So we're on week one. Welcome to FD13. You're watching uh, this, the intro to FD13, computerized design. Uh, the other two videos for this week, of course, are intro to Photoshop and photo editing part one, uh, retouching a portrait. Um, it has also our handouts that you should be looking for. So um, the portrait image, the syllabus, this, this is the FD13 week, weekly schedule of assignments, and then also the handout for our first assignment, which will be retouching a portrait. Um, these are the assignments given for this week and the objectives for this week. And then finally, what is due for this week. And you can scroll through and this uh, see each week, again, the video lessons, handouts, assignments, objectives, and what is due for that week. So you can always be up to date on where you need to be in the course when. La 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 la, la 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 la. Okay, uh, let's go back to our syllabus. Grade breakdown. How grading will work. Each assignment will account for a certain number of points. The number of points on a, uh, an assignment has reflects its percentage impact towards your final grade. For example, an assignment with more points will have a larger impact on your final grade. In this course, there will be a total of 210 points that have been divided up amongst the assignments. For each assignment, a student will receive a score based on that assignment's total points. A student may keep track of their grade by adding up all the points they have scored and dividing it by the total number of points for each assignment. For example, let's take the first three assignments. The first two assignments are out of a total 20 points. The third assignment is out of a total 30 points. This means that the third assignment is going to weigh more heavily on your final grade than the first two. Not that much, but a little bit more. So when you receive a grade, your grade is the first number. And this is how many points total. So to find your grade on that specific assignment, you take your grade and divide it by the total number of points. And that will give you the grade on your assignment and you can keep track of your grade by doing this cumulatively. For example, let's say you have the first three assignments done and want to know your current grade. What you're going to do is you're going to add up all of your scores, 19 plus 15 plus 27, which happens to total 61. Then you're going to add up all the total points, 20 plus 20 plus 30, which happens to total 70 points. You're going to take your score, divide it by 70. You'll get 0.87, which is an 87%. So congratulations, you have a B plus.
<laughs> so if you ever uh, want to know what you have, um, just go ahead and follow this formula and you should always be up to date with what your current grade in the uh, class is. Of course, if you ha are having a little trouble or want to make sure um, you have it right, um, you can always email me and ask if you're missing any assignments or what your current grade is. Um, come a couple weeks in July, I'll give you a midterm sort of grade wrap up, let you know uh, where you're standing, if you're missing anything, so on and so forth. This next section is all of our assignments. Uh, we have nine assignments. Um, we have a portrait retouch, that's the PS retouch. We have a full body uh, edit. Uh, we have a mood board, we have a polo shirt flat, we have some student design flats, a color palette, um, some fabric swatches in the form of stripes, plaids, and prints, uh, flats in three colorways, and the final is an Aptitex pillow pattern. Um, here, so you can ensure that you have all of the assignments turned in, you're not missing anything. And again, if you want to know when those assignments will be due and when they will be assigned, you can go ahead and look at the week-to-week -week schedule, which will keep you up to date with when the assignments are, are given out and when they will be due. There is no final exam for this course. Woohoo! Assignment submission. Assignments will be due each week on the Monday starting that week. So each week has its own course content. So as you can see here, every week we'll, this course will be uh, categorized into week. And again, if you look at your weekly schedule, you'll know what is um, uh, each week will contain. All of the assignments will be due the following week from when they were assigned. So for example, this first week, your first assignment is the PS Retouch, and it will be due the following week on Monday. And you can uh, see here, do Retouching a Portrait on our second week. All assignments, again, will be due that Monday, starting the, the following week from which the assignment was assigned, unless, of course, there is a holiday. In this, think, uh, in this semester, that will only apply to uh, July 5th, because that will be a sort of holiday carried over from the 4th, which is a Sunday. Uh, students may submit up to 11.59 p.m. on that Monday, so you have all day Monday to submit. Um, however, uh, after the clock strikes midnight on Monday, uh, the assignment will be considered late and may incur lateness penalties, so try to avoid that. Uh, for exact due dates for each assignment, please refer to the assignment handout. Because again, it may vary depending on if Monday is a holiday. All work should be emailed to the instructor, instructor on time at my email. And here it is, Catherine Resky at kbcc.cuny.edu. And of course, you can use this to um, ask any questions that you want about anything. Um, so on and so forth. Uh, all assignments will have a specified file type and file name required for submission detailed on the assignment handout. Please be sure to submit your assignments with the correct file type and name. Failure to do so may result in the assignment not being accepted. So on your assignment handout, and again, as, as mentioned, every assignment will have its own ha handout. Um, detailing what is expected, but on that it will have um, a submission guidelines section and it will say what, how, the uh, how the assignment should be submitted and it will specify a file type and a file name. So this means that um, if I am requiring an assignment be submitted as a JPEG, it must be submitted as a JPEG. Um, it also must be named correctly. Um, and failure to do these things, failure to either of these things, um, uh, could um, create the danger that your assignment will not be accepted. Attendance. Attendance of this course will be based solely on the timely submissions of assignments. Late assignments will have um, points subtracted to the student's grade. Extremely poor attendance may result in a WU. Now, um, I want to take a minute to um, 
really emphasize a point here because this is very important. Um, please get the first assignment in on time. Um, what I have to do, what I am required to do as an instructor is um, within the first even like week or two of this uh, semester, because again, it's a short semester, so we don't have a lot of time for a lot of these things. So I think even a week after our first course, I am required um, to submit my verification of attendance records. Now, what this is, is I have to tell the school whether you, my students, have participated in my course or not. Um, if I have not received your first assignment or I have not received an email from you expressing that you are participating in this course, I have to mark you down uh, as never having attended. This will result in you getting an immediate NW, um, uh, which is a never attended withdrawal, um, which we don't want to do because then you know, um, you'll be automatically withdrawn for this course. Uh, so please, 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 please. Either A, get in your first assignment on time, or if for any reason you cannot do this, please, 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 please email me and let me know that yes, um, you are participating in this course you intend to participate in this course just for whatever reason you might not be having issues you can't get your first assignment in on time um uh if not if you don't do either of those things if you don't get your first assignment in on time and you don't communicate with me that you intend to participate in this course i am required um, uh, by KCC policy to mark you as never having attended, which will be an immediate withdrawal with, from this course. So please, please, please do either one of those things. Um, on a whole, communication with me, especially for these online courses, is really important. Um, if you don't communicate that you're having problems or that you need help or you need extensions or whatever else, I don't know and I can't help you and I'm not, I can't uh, 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 apply any extensions without that communication. So please do your best um, if you're having any issues uh, to let me know what your issues are. Communicate with me. If I'm up to date with your situation, um, I can be as accommodating as possible, but if I don't know, I, I can't make any accommodation. So please, please, please just try to keep those lines of communications open. They're so important in these types of classes. Um, and I'm here, I'm waiting for your emails, I'm waiting for your questions. Um, and that's what I, I need from you, um, that communication to let me know where you are, to let me know what issues you're having, uh, so on and so forth. Remote desktop access. So this course requires the student to be able to access various software. Uh, we mentioned them before, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, um, and Optitex. Now, if you have your own versions of Illustrator and Photoshop, fine. You should probably be able to use those. However, I'm gonna guess you don't have your own Optitex because that's like a $10,000 industry software. Um, so at some point, you are going to have to set up your VDI remote desktop access. So KCC has set up a system uh, where remote desktop links will be made available to students and they will allow them to link their computers with the computers located on KCC campuses. These uh, um, computers obviously will be furnished with all the software that you need. Uh, the software uh, to establish this remote desktop link is called VM Horizon Client. Uh, the on-campus computers have of course the software that you need and through this link will give you access to them to them. At the beginning of the semester, you will receive an email in your school account uh, that will detail the process on how to use and set up the remote desktop system. A video tutorial on how to set up your VDI connection will also be posted to the course information section on Blackboard. It's quick and easy to do. Um, it will be your responsibility to install the necessary software in order to, to create the remote desktop link. Any student that has issues with the remote desktop link should contact IT and not me. I cannot help you with this, unfortunately. Wish I could, but I can't. 
Um, it's set up by them, it's run by them, it's maintained by them. I cannot help you. I can help you with all your questions on how to use Photoshop and Illustrator, but not setting up this uh, remote desktop link. If you are having problems with the, setting up the remote desktop, open a help desk ticket with IT and specify the issues you are having with the VDI software. But also pretty much to be good uh, to mention the class that you're taking and also the software that you want to access. Students will need a flash drive in order to save and import files using this VDI system or the remote desktop system. Um, no work can be saved to the um, lab computers or, or the school computers that you're linking with. Um, I don't think they even offer the possibility of saving to the computers, and even if you do, they're wiped and re-imaged daily. Um, if you log out and log back on, you're not guaranteed the same computer, so even if you some, are somehow able to save to that computer, you're not guaranteed to get that same computer. Um, however, uh, the remote desktop system allows you to save and import files to the um, remote computer using a flash drive, so you will need a flash drive. It is the student's responsibility to save and back up their own work. Um, I do not accept, oh, it got deleted, as an excuse for not having your work, unfortunately. Quick policies, um, you are expected to do your own work. If you cheat or copy someone else's work or allow yours to be copied, and again, this might not be something that you're even willing to do, um, or know that you're doing. Uh, I have had a lot of instances where um, I have had students plagiarize another student's work um, and it's, it's very unfortunate um, because a lot of times the student that they plagiarized off of uh, did not know that they were going to simply copy their work. A student will reach out to another student via email or something. So, oh, you know, I'm I'm having world big trouble with this assignment. Can you can you just send me what you've done and 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 I'll you know I'm gonna do it myself. But I just I just want to guide or you know something like that. And what they do is then they just simply take the student's work um, and turn it in um, uh, as their own. Unfortunately, when this occurs, both students, no matter the situation, receive, receive a, a zero for that assignment with no option to make it up. Um, so protect your own work. Do not share your own work. If someone is coming with, oh, I need help, tell them to email me. That's what my job is, to here to help you guys. So if they're having issues with completing their work, it is not your job or your responsibility to help them. And certainly never, ever, ever uh, send them your work. It's not helping them. For the most part, they pretty much just want to plagiarize you. Um, repeat offenses, um, you will run uh, uh, the risk of failing the course um, and depending on um, the severity and if this is a repeat offense from other courses, you could um, uh, risk expulsion. Um, you can find KCC's full plagiarism policy on the website. Civility, although this is asynchronous with no uh, discussion boards or anything else, um, if you do work with your classmates, civility, civility to me, <laughs> civility to everyone, uh, please. Uh, different resources, so again, if you have any questions or concerns, like I mentioned before, communication is so key. Um, just check in uh, with me uh, at my email, katherine.noreski at kvcc.cuny.edu. Um, spelling my name incorrectly uh, is also not an excuse for late work. It's right here. I have it about 10 times on the syllabus. So spell my name correctly when you type in my email. Uh, <laughs> and again, uh, I'll, I'm going to be here for any questions or concerns. I can um, create your own little videos and stuff too, which are a lot of times very helpful if you're having a, a particularly individual problem with some of the more individual um, assignments. You can also uh, email the Virtual Fashion Lab for any questions relating to the fashion design program. Of course, you should already know this and you should be going to them for your um, registration advice. But if you have any other sort of program related questions, uh, you can ask our um, CTL staff at kccfashionlab at gmail.com. And for a full list of resources available to Kingsborough students, please visit the school's webpage for student resources. Uh, which is listed right here. All right, guys, again, I hope we have a great semester. Um, we have a lot of fun assignments planned. 
Um, and uh, that's about it. Uh, can't wait to see your first assignments. And again, just to reiterate, please, please, please get that first assignment in or email me. Otherwise, again, you're going to get an automatic withdrawal um, from the course, and that's not something we want to have to deal with. So please, please, please. Um, and I hope you have a fun time. I hope you learn a lot. And bye-bye.